So happy you're here. I've never been to Liverpool before. Um, I'm excited. How many of you are from this area? Yeah. 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 Hey, is this the first time I'm getting to meet some of you? Yes. 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 Yeah. Good, good. Well, I'm very, very happy to be here. Um, I have a lot of things to talk to you about, and I know we've got somebody. Do we have somebody? We have me, yeah. Are you going to go out and uh, do uh, questions? Yes, to do whatever you need me to do. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I love this plan. Um, First of all, let me tell you some things that I'm working on. Um, I know that somebody in the audience is probably going to say, what are you working on? So I made a list. <laughs> um, so I'm going to read it really quick, okay? And uh, some of these shows you may have heard of, some of them, a lot of them you may not have heard of, which is fine. Um, so let's see, Unbreakable Machine Doll, Space, you've never heard of that. <laughs> Space Dandy, uh, Carnival, uh, Toge Raven, Maji, Sailor Moon, Rocky, Free, oh, Free, Free. Come on, boys. You know you love those Speedo bathing suits. You want to wear one too, don't you? Um, oh my gosh, I love Free. I love Free. I love Free mostly because my character is Shark, you know? Ring is Shark Boy. I had a pet shark when I was a kid. Anybody here have a pet shark? No. <laughs> ah, see, I I had one. I'm not kidding. You must be the coolest guy in your neighborhood with a pet shark. I was for about three days. Um, I, you think I'm kidding? I'm serious. I um I I was fishing off of this river. My mom moved to Ocean City, Maryland, when I was 17 years old. And um, Maryland is this wonderful little peninsula beach town right on the, on the Atlantic, and there's a bridge that goes over uh, from the mainland to Ocean City, right? So one night I was fishing off this bridge, and I caught something that was pretty strong. But I was on a bridge, right? So the water's down there about 30 feet wide. I couldn't reel it up, <laughs> straight up, you know, suspended in the air. I couldn't get up, to, up, up all the way to the bridge, so I'm like, okay, I don't want to let go of it because it's too cool. Whatever it is, it's, it's going to be good. So I walked it down the bridge, and every time I would come to a lamppost, I would... <laughs> Until I got down to where the land met, and I reeled it in, and it was a baby sand shark. Like 18 inches. It was the cutest thing you've ever seen. It had little baby teeth. So like, it couldn't hurt you, because it was too little. So I like put my finger in his mouth and go, oh, 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 oh. and it couldn't hurt me. I mean, how many people can say that? <laughs> you know, they stuck their hand in a shark's mouth. Didn't hurt. So I, I loved him so much that I took him home and I put him in a tub. I named him Sherman, <laughs> and he was beautiful. And I, I loved him so much. I was so proud because you know everybody else has dogs and cats, right? Hamsters, maybe an occasional ferret. <laughs> but not a shark. So I took him home and I loved him until I realized about three days later that sharks live in salt water, oh. not bathtub water. So he wasn't, he was slowing down. You know what I mean? It looked like he wasn't doing well. So I took him, I, I picked up one side of the tub and my cousin picked up the other side and we walked him back out to the ocean. And I picked him up and I sat him into the water, and I'm like, okay, bye, Sherman, I'm sorry I almost killed you. <laughs> bye. And he would try to swim away, but he was so small, and he was so weak, that every time a wave would come in, it would push him back in. Oh, and I was like, <laughs> I killed Sherman. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh, he can't, he's not strong enough to swim away. And then I had my idea. I picked him up and I just started walking out into the ocean. And I got deeper and deeper 
And I got like this. I was like, okay, Sherman, now I'm gonna let you go one more time. <laughs> and I put him under the water, and he f just swam away. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to think that maybe he's destroying a fishing boat somewhere. <laughs> Maybe he's in Australia, attacking somewhere. Anyway, so that's why I love freebies. Yeah, I got, I got distracted, sorry. Um, I see a Lifetime movie in that, I really do. <laughs> uh, Brothers Conflict. Duramara. Yes! Black yeah. Butler. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> you guys want to hear my Black Butler story? Oh my gosh, you're going to love this story more than anybody else on the planet Earth. And you're going to find out why in about two minutes. So I auditioned for the first season of Black Butler, okay? And, um, and I sent my audition to Colleen Clinkenbeard, who was directing Black Butler at the time, like at the very beginning. And she wrote me back and she said, I loved your audition, but your British accent sucks. <laughs> So, I didn't get in. So then the next season of Black Butler comes along. And they asked me to audition for Claude. Woo! Do you know who Claude is? So I auditioned, and this time I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it really good this time. This time, I'm gonna do that accent so good, and I'm gonna send it to my friends who are British, and they're gonna tell me if it's good or not, right? And I'm gonna make it perfect. Perfect. And I sent it off. And, um, and like my friends were like, yeah, it sounds really, it sounds good, it sounds good. And I sent it to Funimation, and they wrote me back and said, loved your audition, your British accent still sucks. <laughs> so I was like, crap, I'm never gonna get to be in Black Butler. And then finally Book of Circus came along, and, uh, and I got to play a part in that, so. That's my Black Butler story. All right. Um, Heroic Legend of Arslan, Garo, Rage of Bahamut, Show by Rock, Ruby. Woo! I love Ruby. I love Uncle Crow. <laughs> <laughs> Is that my female crow back there? Somewhere. Where's the crow? Girl? Is she in here? There was a cosplayer drag girl that dressed as a female version of Crow. Oh. You're not a girl, I can tell that. <laughs> but you look awesome. Um, thank you for doing that too. That's, see, I'm glad you did that. Because now I can see everybody. Hi. <laughs> you guys look great. Um, let's see, where did I leave off? Ruby. Lord Marksman of Venatus. Ladybug. Uh, God Eater, that's a video game. Battle Battalions, video game. Escaflone. Any Escaflone fans here? Yeah. Old school. That's old school. <laughs> thank you, bad girl. Um, one of the coolest things about Escaflone is that I play the older brother. And guess who plays my younger brother? His name is Aaron Dismuke. Aaron played my younger brother, Al, in Full Metal Alchemist. So, the brothers Elric together again. Uh, let's see. Uh, Escaflone, World of Wings, Tonari, Utuari, Anti Gang, All Noah Zero, Pillars of Eternity, that's a video game. Fairy Tale? I'm so excited, finally. I think they gave everybody else a role in fairy tale. Like they ran out of voice actors. So I guess we have to have they can do something now. Uh, Strike Witches, Garo, Crimson Moon, Charlotte, Digimon, some Digimon fans here. Uh, Rio Rainbow Gate, Charger Girl Judachon, World of Warcraft, uh, Asterix War, Star Trek Online. Now, now we're talking. Now we're talking about my heart. Right, my love. You guys know how much I love Star Trek, right? No, you don't know. You just don't know. Um, when I was a little boy, I ate, slept, and breathed Star Trek. I mean, me. I, I was crazy in love with Star Trek. My mother, oh my God, I made my mother insane. She hated it so much. Because I, like, I would, I wanted to, I was constantly locked in my room, watching Star Trek, building phasers, making costumes. I got my mom to teach me to use a sewing machine so I could make my own uniforms. She used to call it Star Trash. <laughs> Just to make fun of me. 
And, um, and so I, I loved it so much. But it inspired me to do a lot of things, to try a lot of things creatively that I had never tried before. And I'll bet you guys understand that. I'll bet a lot of you have watched anime series or a video game or a sci-fi series and you decided you wanted to try to build something from that TV show or you wanted to make a costume from that anime or you wanted to write uh, a fan fiction about based on that anime or you wanted to go and audition for a play because you enjoyed the acting in something. Star Trek was that for me. It inspired me to do a lot of the things that I do professionally now. So, I have a web series that you all need to check out. It's called Star Trek Continues. It hits it. Yeah. Do that again for me. I have a guy kid. Um, I, uh, I got a bunch of my friends together and we rebuilt the entire soundstage for the original series of Star Trek. All of the sets. And we're making episodes that continue the five-year mission from the original Star Trek. Remember the original? Yeah. Are, are, are most of you too young to remember the original Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock and Dr. McCoy? Well, the original Star Trek series, I don't know if you know this or not, but at the very beginning, Captain Kirk used to say, these are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. It's five-year mission. Problem is, they were canceled in their third TV season. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool to continue it right where it left off and finish the five-year mission of the Enterprise? <laughs> and then leave everybody where the motion picture in the late 70s picked up 10 years later. So check it out online, and you're going to love this. This is the best part. It's free. It's totally free. StarTrekContinues.com. You can look it up. Watch it. Tell me. You know what? Even if you don't like Star Trek, I bet your dad does. Or your uncle. Or your mom. Or your neighbors. Or your school teachers. Tell your friends and check it out. Like us on Facebook. A lot of people in it whose faces you will recognize. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So you can imagine how much I love being a part of Star Trek Online. Because that's kind of like my childhood dream. Where did I leave off? Star Trek Online. Mobile Legends, Skip Beat, Seven Knights, One Punch Man. Yeah. Oh, one Punch Man. Huh? Uh, Roni Kenshin, Dankin Rampa. Is that a good one? <laughs> Need likes it, so it's good. Um, Sonic. Video game, uh, Token Ronbu, Galaga, Yuri on Ice. <laughs> Umaru, Joker Game, Nambaka, League of Legends. One Piece. Yeah, I'm um, getting to play Sabo in One Piece, which I'm very excited about. And uh, yeah, that's the only ones I'm allowed to talk about right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're so funny. Um, so yes, I'm working on that stuff. And before we take some questions, let me tell you also, a lot of you guys wrote me emails and asked me if I was going to be bringing my music CDs. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but I, I've been writing and producing and singing music twice as long as I've been voice acting. I have a lot of really good CDs. Anybody here have any of my music? Do you like it? Look at this, like three people. It's good music, I promise. If I sounded like... Really bad, I would not tell you that. I would not, I would not tell you it was good. But it's really good stuff. And a lot of songs from anime series that I've sung the theme songs for, Dragon Ball Z, and Oron, and, and Full Metal, and uh, Dean Angel, and One Piece, and, um, but also, I have the, I have the music CDs at my, at my autograph table, but I also have something else. I have a live concert DVD. And it's a really great concert. I, I did it at a convention, and it, the video is really great. And like all these cool lights flying around. And it's really well shot, and fog machines, and a great audience, and good music. It has like a Dolby surround sound mix. But there's a bonus feature on the concert DVD that I have to tell you about. 
Back when I was recording Full Metal Alchemist, I was having so much fun. I loved that show so much that I wanted to cosplay. I wanted to cosplay as the Pipsqueak so bad. And so I made up a little story. I made up a story whereby a grown man could play an animal, could like start turning into an anime character, right? And then I asked some of the other voice actors in Full Metal if they wanted to be in it too. So we made something, a live action little parody film called Full Metal Fantasy. <laughs> it's never been available anywhere. It's never been online. I only show it when I do like concerts or things like that. But when I made this DVD, I decided that so many people had wanted to see it and have it that I decided to put it on the DVD. So it's on the concert DVD as well, and I've got those at the autograph table as well, so I wanted to let you know about that. And I hope you'll come over and see me. As soon as we're done here, I'm gonna go back to the autograph table, so please come and say hi, and let me sign something for you, okay? You? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> okay, let's talk about anything you wanna talk about. Oh, and I'm on Twitter, so follow me on Twitter. If you're not 